from the computer. So, okay. So we will just pretend uh, 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 Brian read to us the, the opening prayer here. So we come to welcome time. So let's go ahead and uh, Becky, would you uh, ask, uh, unmute everybody? And so on your screens, um, you've been asked to unmute yourself. And so if you just go in there and, and unmute uh, yourself and then say hi to everyone. Hello. Morning. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to our worship service today. All right. So, okay, Becky, go ahead and, and uh, mute everybody. I'm going to mute everyone, and then Seth, I'll unmute you. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we're, I think we're, we're set. Okay. So um, we come to our prayers and um, one of the things that I uh, want to lift up, um, I'm going to read our prayer list um, that uh, has been shared. And, um, and certainly th this, think of this as kind of an announcement time. Um, but uh, <clears throat> these are the, the prayers that uh, are lifted up uh, on a weekly basis. We, we lift up uh, for, and this is listed under the, the health concerns, uh, Fedora Hatch, that is Ramad Gomez's sister-in-law. Uh, she's in ICU in Texas with COVID-19. Uh, Rhoda Smith is recovering from a stroke. Uh, Gunnar Dietrich is a two-year-old uh, child uh, that was burned by fireworks in the fourth. Um, Sam Jones is out of the hospital. Uh, Burl Moore is uh, Lois Robinson's cousin. He's got some heart concerns. Uh, Jenny Martin is uh, Mildred Moody's granddaughter. Uh, Deb Caldewalder is Melissa Rupp and Kendrick Caldewalder's mom. Uh, Tiffany Gartner is Lucille Meyer's granddaughter. And uh, Joe Newrood is uh, Sandy's. Preston's son is improving but still having respiratory problems. And certainly we want to lift up Martin Munoz. Um, one to add to that list, um, I visited with Liz on Friday, and she is our pastor at Central Alabanza, our Spanish-speaking church, uh, and also at Melbida. And her mom is from Mexico, is from the state in Mexico where we built the casitas. And um, like so many plans, uh, she was supposed to go and visit her family. Well, the cases in Mexico are on the rise of COVID-19. And uh, Liz told me the other day that uh, several family members have been hit by COVID-19 and there's actually been a death in her family. And so she definitely lifts up her mom's family in, in her prayer thoughts. And, um, and one story that she shared uh, is that uh, she has a, a cousin and I, I, I wanna say he was in Mexico City, but I can't quite remember, it was in one of the large cities in Mexico. And um, he, has all of the symptoms of COVID, um, but he can't get a test because it costs somewhere around four to seven thousand dollars to get a test. And uh, uh, because he cannot prove that he has COVID nineteen, he has to continue to work. But he's got all of these symptoms, and um, uh, they obviously don't have the money for the tests. So uh, uh, definitely, there's we lift up our brothers and sisters south of the border. Um, and um, um, we, we, we think of Liz and her family, and her, especially her mom's family. Uh, those on the cancer list, we lift up Deb Greenwald. Uh, last week, we shared that uh, she started treatments. Uh, Sharon Lawson, who was Jim Lawson's sister-in-law. Uh, Kim Weiss, who was Barb and Harlow Hill's friend. Uh, Lonnie Sherlock, who was Joanne Keller's cousin. Uh, for Kara Rice. Uh, for Cinda Munoz, and Cinda was at church this morning, and she was doing okay. She said she thank, thanked you for the prayers. Uh, Doug Brown is Bonnie Brown's son. Uh, Pam Walsh is Jim Lawson's sister. Uh, for Jim Cable, uh, Amy Murphy. Uh, Travis Kloss, who's got chemo, that is uh, Phil and Vicki Schmidt's um, son-in-law. Um, and for those recovering from surgery, we lift up Joe uh, Newrood recovering from eye surgery. Um, and uh, Sandy Preston's little granddaughter from Connecticut and her five-year-old friend, Kinsey, had open heart surgery on July 9th. Um, Helen McDonald, 
Uh, I visited with her this week and she had her sister with her who went home, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. And so she is, um, but she's getting along very well and uh, has uh, someone that lives down the street that's, that's coming in to watch, uh, watch over her. Uh, Soren uh, Dornberg is doing better each day. And certainly we lift up the prayers for Soren, the kidney donor for Soren. Um, Jana Smith is recovering from surgery and Maya Rupp is doing well. She, her final checkup was delayed because of the virus and we lift up Dina Joe. Uh, continued prayers go out to Henry and Evelyn Meter, uh, to Kayla Dutton, that's Ron and Louise Dutton's daughter-in-law, certainly to the Greenwald family, uh, to Jerry Weinman and his family, to Epworth people, those at Epworth Village, and to our servicemen and women and families. Uh, and here's a list of those in the care centers and assisted living. Uh, we lift up Ellen and Harold Maxey, uh, Wanda Schmidt, uh, Peggy Hecox, um, Esther Martin, uh, Carolyn Rickey, uh, Rita Walworth, Maria, uh, Mariah Ross, uh, Carolyn Swanson, uh, Gerald and Rhoda Smith, Dwayne Ahrens, Dolores Benjamin, Ron Dutton, Benny Carter, uh, Twyla Inlow, Judy Leafdale, and Lucy Meyer. Uh, those are the, uh, the prayers, um, uh, and we lift them up in our prayer thoughts here today. Um, certainly, if you have any prayer concerns or joys, uh, please share them in uh, the, the chat function. Um, or if you would like to send them on um, my cell phone, uh, we'll get that available for everybody. And uh, um, I'm going to move on to, uh, uh, we've got uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Um, certainly lift uh, any birthdays or anniversaries or prayers to be lifted up right now. Okay, don't see any. Um, just want to move on. Uh, we'll just remind everyone uh, on the top right of your Zoom call, if you go to gallery view, uh, one of the things that that does is it helps you see a little bit better, uh, makes the screen a little bit bigger. Uh, if you know how to do that, so not, all fun not all Zoom functions are the same, um, but that is something that if you click on gallery view, there's, there's speaker view, which shows everyone on the screen. Uh, but, uh, gal uh, but if you click on that on gallery view, uh, you certainly see, though, see a little bit better screen that is on there as well. Um, just to remind you that today is communion. Uh, we're going to have Holy Communion today. And uh, so when we get to that point, um, um, if you have bread, if you have juice, um, uh, have that available. Um, and certainly anything that you have available. We don't want you to run out to the store and, and just get something from communion. Uh, our bishop has allowed us to uh, have that available, uh, whatever is handy. Uh, for I did receive a, a chat. Uh, Rich and Linda Halverson uh, is their 51st anniversary tomorrow. Uh, that is Nicole Gosnell's uh, uh, folks. Um, I got to know both Rich and Linda when I was a pastor in Shadron, and we lift them up uh, for their anniversary tomorrow. And happy anniversary to them. Thank you, for Nicole, for uh, sharing that on the chat function. Any others? Okay. Um, I'm going to move to the uh, children's time, and I'm going to uh, move my laptop and uh, uh, a bit so that you can see this function here. So, uh, so I'm going to move it over here, and uh, this is this is a thing that uh, you can get at um, uh, Dollar Tree, and it's really really cool. Uh, so this dinosaur. And it says right up here, I don't know if you can see it, it says grows up to 600%. So that means that this little dinosaur, when it's done, it's going to fill this church office. Line. So, all right. Uh, so uh, the way to do it, and so you see here, we've got a pitcher of water. So we're, we're going to give this. I'm, I, I, I haven't even tried this. I, I'm real kind of see, see how this works here. Okay. So when it's done, it will fill this office. That's what it says right there, 
See, it's huge. It's huge. See? Oh. <laughs> Maybe I better read the instructions. Submerge your creature in a large container full of room wa temperature water. Okay, that, that's, that's true. Make sure there's enough room for your creature to grow. Well, if it's going to be 600%, it's, it's going to fill this one. Um, your broke creature may take up to, oh, 10 days. 10 days. Completely grow. Okay, so I hope everyone's comfortable. We're going to be here for 10 days to watch it grow. I got this thing because that's what we're doing right now is we're waiting. We are waiting. As you can see, we're going to be waiting a long time. Now, the Hebrew brother, our Hebrew brothers and sisters waited 40 years. That's a long time to get to the promise. All we have to do is wait 10 days for this thing to grow. 600 percent but we're waiting your parents and your grandparents and people are waiting they're waiting for this virus to be over they're waiting for things to be back to normal i'm waiting for this thing to grow 600 percent this kind of represents of where we are right now we kind of wait for school to start and we don't quite know what's going to happen at school uh we're waiting to get some direction on sunday school and children's church and all of those things like this dinosaur we're waiting and, and i'll be honest with you it's hard to wait I, i'm not a patient person and and i want this one maybe i could wait 10 days to see what happens with this dinosaur but you know many of us have been waiting over 100 days to kind of see things getting better with this with this pandemic and quarantine and and all these things and it's just nothing's changing so frustrating i understand where you are and you're probably um feeling that a bit with your parents and grandparents and your friends there's just kind of uh an impatience there so as i said go ahead and, and get one of these at the dollar tree i think it'll be kind of fun and uh, if you find that I am not able to get into my office because this thing has grown 600%, you know it works. So, uh, and uh, um, so David and Maya and Marley, good to see you. Glad to have you with us, join us today. So, 10 days. That doesn't sound so bad. I think we could wait 10 days for this pandemic to be over, but it's going to be a little bit longer. And so what you're going to hear from the grown-up message today is that there's still a lot more waiting to happen. And people will come back to it once church is done uh, here today and see if this uh, dinosaur has grown up. All right, so let us pray. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for being with us uh, as we pray, as we worship, and as we wait. It's a frustrating time, and we're just seeking some direction. In your name we pray. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn the screen. So uh, takes maximum advantage of the. Right, I'm going to switch gears here just so I can uh, make sure we're right centered on. There we go. The the green screen. Okay. Um. I think we're good. All right, so now we're going to move to our prayer time. And uh, um, we certainly want to lift up those prayers that, that I shared on the sheet here today. Um, and in there, uh, the one that was from Liz. Um, and uh, we, uh, uh, any, other, any other prayers that, uh, to, be, to be shared? Um, in the chat function or use my cell phone. So we have another family member of the Larsons. Uh, I see Heidi there on her laptop. And so let's go ahead and, and unmute Heidi. Uh, 
Okay, and uh, okay. Uh, one second, let me go ahead and, and uh, share the screen. Okay, Heidi, are you able to read what's on the screen? I can. Okay, let us pray. Gracious Lord, we are filled with a mixture of feelings today. Some of us are rejoicing in the wonderful time of rest and relaxation, while others continue to seek relief from the burdens and worries that they bear. All of us stand in need of your refreshing and nourishing love and forgiveness. You know how many times we have turned our backs on those in need. We have been too busy, too preoccupied with our own problems. Cause us to turn around and see instances in which you in which we can be of help and comfort to someone else. Give us strength and courage to truly be your loving disciples in the ways in which we care for others. Forgive us when we stray from the paths of righteousness and peace. These things we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let us have a, a moment of short silence. Dear Lord, we, uh, we lift up these prayers and uh, those that are left unspoken. Um, gracious God, there's a lot to that we bring to your, uh, to your table, to your lap, to your feet. I just ask that you be with us as, uh, as you hear us, um, whether in our silence, you hear us in our pains, as you hear us in our journey. Um, be with us now as we lift up your holy name and our Lord's let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And, and the, the power, power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to tell you about Sam and Edith. Uh, Sam and Edith were both in their 80s, been married about 60 years. Um, they were not rich, mainly due to Sam's penny pinching, uh, and they were in good health, uh, mainly due to, to Edith's uh, insistence that they eat healthy food and they exercise. But one day, all that good stuff, all that stuff that they were doing didn't help. They were on a, on a rare vacation. It was something they've been saving for for a long time, and their plane crashed. Both ended up in heaven. While they were at the pearly gates, their escort came up to them and took Sam and Edith, showed them their mansion. And uh, with all the gold and fine silks, uh, showed them the fully stocked kitchen, waterfall in the master bath, favorite clothes in their closet. And the escort said, welcome to heaven. This is your new home. Sam right away said, uh, how much is it going to cost? Why nothing, said the escort. I remember this is your reward in heaven. Then Sam looked out at the window. Of their house lay right on a championship golf course. And Sam says, uh, uh, what are the green fees? And the companion just says, this is heaven. You play, we'll play, you play, you get to play for free every day. And then that escort, he, he took them to the clubhouse and showed them this lavish buffet with seafood and steak and exotic desserts and beverages of all kind. Don't even ask, said the companion, this is heaven. It is for you to enjoy for free. Sam kind of nervously looked over to Edith and says, well, where are the low fats and low cholesterol foods and the decaf tea? It's the best part, said the companion. You can eat and drink all you want. Never get fat or sick. This is heaven. And begin to push. He says, um, I don't have to go out and work out at the gym. Not unless you want to. Uh, no testing my blood sugar and, and blood pressure. And never again. All you have to do here is just enjoy yourself. 
And with that, Sam glared at Edith. Is you and your crappy brand muffins, we could have been here 15 years ago. Oh, the irony. I think that's an apt word right now. Irony or ironic. Uh, we, now we know that the, the, the word means funny or humorous. Um, but when you look at the synonyms, these words kind of have a bite to them. Uh, a negative connotation. Uh, let me just uh, kind of share the screen here so you can see um, some, some of the synonyms here. Uh, sarcasm, bitterness, cynicism, mockery, satire, ridicule, scorn, sneering. These are words that no comedian wants to hear. But today is not about comedy. We come to church, we, we, we tune into worship because we need something. Uh, we need a word of assurance, a connection with community, belief that, that we're doing right, a, a jolt for the upcoming week. Rest when we feel weary. Um, now, this is not a message about the definition of church. I think we have an idea on that, or at least we're trying to figure that out here in this new normal. But we talk about irony because we're not quite ready for the promised land yet. We're still in the wilderness. We're still attempting to manage this pandemic. We're not out of the clear. Now, today's message is going to focus in on one verse of Deuteronomy. Um, so let's just remember where we left things off here a couple weeks ago. Things look so hopeful for the people. Uh, we left Exodus behind. We moved into a new book of the Bible. Uh, there was this talk of the promised land. And so we're thinking, gosh, it must be close. Uh, it, it has to be getting close, don't we? I mean, the Hebrew people have been doing this for 40 years. Oh, the irony. You see, when Lauren reads to us, we're only on chapter 2 of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy has 34 chapters. On the positive side, that means that we know it's going to end. We've had a long journey so far, but the irony is that there is still so much more of the journey left. That's why we're calling it incessantly waiting. So let's get right to our, our ironic statement. And um, Lauren, you've been asked to uh, unmute. Um, go ahead and unmute your screen there. Okay. And uh, let me uh, share the screen. Okay, Lauren, are you able to read the words on the screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, I'm reading out of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible I have here in front of me, however. Surely the Lord your God has blessed you in your undertakings. He knows you're going through a great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have lacked nothing. Thank you, Lauren. Um, short passage, one verse, but packed with so much. You have been blessed. God knows that you are in the wilderness. And, and we can replace wilderness with uh, the pandemic or to a job loss or to an uncertain future or to a health crisis or to a, a recent fight you've had uh, or to the loss of a loved one or to a changing environment or to money troubles or, or to whatever. 40 years, however long you've been in this, God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. Now, I read this as an ironic statement, so bear with me here. The last time that, that I sat right here with you, I asked you if you were tired, and no one argued. And then the strange thing happened. A few days later, I sat in on a Zoom call with pastors in the district, and the person that led the devotional had not heard me preach, but asked the exact same question. And so it got me thinking, how can we hear this passage and still think good thoughts? 
COVID cases are going up around the country. States are going from stage three back to stage two in the quarantine. Uh, games are being canceled. People are fighting and arguing more. You see pe worry on people's faces. Well, you can't see worry in their faces because they're wearing masks. You have to see worry on their eyes. How can God bless us in a time like this? How can we be certain that God is with us in the wilderness? Are these ironic words? Is God being cynical and sarcastic in our greatest time of need? Is the writer ridiculing the Hebrew people with scorn and sneering? Or is there a deeper meaning here? You know, I, I think this question can only be answered with a lot of prayer and discernment and really serious Bible study. And I wish that was our focus. Instead, I want to draw you back to something that I said earlier in the sermon. Um, we read things now differently. Our experience of the pandemic has changed the way we look at life. And so I challenge you to, to go back to a book that you read before the pandemic, read it now, and see if you can get some new insights. And for me, it is when bad things happen, good people. The iconic work by uh, uh, Rabbi Harold Kushner. Um, got some great stuff in here, but there was one chapter that really jumped out at me. And, and it's a chapter where he's talking about um, how could God allow the whole cost of it? And he, and he talks about this time of, of suffering, at least from a Jewish perspective. And so he says, I would like to think that the anguish I feel when I read of the sufferings of the innocent people reflects God's anguish and God's compassion, even if God's way of feeling pain is different from ours. Then he quotes, from a survivor of Auschwitz. And uh, one second here is, as I share the screen. Um, this is what that, author, that person from Auschwitz said. It never occurred to me to question God's doing or lack of doing while I was an inmate of Auschwitz. Although of course I understand others did. I was no less or no more religious because of what the Nazis did to us. I believe my faith in God was not undermined in the least. It never occurred to me to associate the calamity we were experiencing with God, to blame God, or to believe in him less, or cease believing in God at all, because God didn't come to our aid. God doesn't owe us that, or anything. We owe our lives to him. If someone believes God is responsible for the death of six million because he didn't somehow do something to save them, he's got his thinking reversed. We owe God our lives for the few or many years we live. And we have the duty to worship him and do so as God commands us. That's what we're here on earth for, to be in God's service, to do God's bidding. I think it is so easy for us to go down that road during a pandemic and think, what is the lesson? I, I know each one of us has done it. Uh, this week, I was on a Zoom call with pastors in the community, and in every church, that's what people are doing, trying to make sense of the journey in this world. Uh, and people are asking questions like, uh, um, are people supposed to be returning to God? Um, are, are we spending too much money on a church building? Um, should we be doing more for the environment? Should we be taking better stock of our friendships? Should we be honoring family more? Should we be forgetting our differences and, and just coming together? We are asking these questions. We are looking for these blessings. We are trying to find the silver lining. We're, we're trying to figure out these reflective moments, but I'll be honest with you. And, and I thought about that during my staycation. It is hard to be thinking about philosophical and theological questions when you're still walking in the wilderness. When you're still living paycheck to pay. When you are still afraid about what's gonna happen in the future. And it really comes down to a question of faith. As I shared with you, um, I was able to catch up on some reading during my uh, vacation. And I read a book that really stood out to me. Uh, Karen Armstrong wrote a book called In the Beginning, A New Interpretation of Genesis. I really, really like this. 
I, I want to share it with you in a, in a Bible study, a Sunday school, uh, in a sermon series, maybe, maybe all three. And there was just a lot of really good stuff here, uh, including a, a nugget about the Holocaust. She, she shares this story about how a group of Jews um, were in a concentration camp, and they decided to put God on trial. And they charged God with not stopping the Holocaust for allowing the death of six million of their brothers and sisters. And they found God guilty. And then after everyone, after the verdict was read, and, and just about when everyone was getting ready to get up and leave, leave, the rabbi said, now let us pray. Ironic, maybe. Sarcastic, probably not. Satire, possibly in a heavenly way. But you need to understand, and this really goes back to the first time that, that I heard a reasonable definition of Judaism, and it goes like this. And, and so let me share the screen here. You can be a Jew if you are for God. You can be a Jew if you are against God, but you cannot be a Jew without God. I want those words to kind of sink in for you as you watch this video. When we pray for help, we trust that God cares. When we pray for patience, we trust that God's timing is perfect. When we pray for understanding, we trust that God is all-knowing. When we pray for forgiveness, we trust that God is merciful. When we pray for a blessing, we trust that God provides. When we pray with thanksgiving, we trust that he is good. When we pray to glorify God, we trust that he is almighty. When we pray, we trust God. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Surely the Lord your God has blessed you in all your undertakings. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. Why is faith so important? Well, it encumbers every story of the Bible. Uh, there's an excerpt from Armstrong's book about the story of Lot that I want to share with you. He writes, but as we see in the career of Lot, Abraham's nephew, appearances are deceptive. Abraham was a man of faith because despite his moments of despair, he was a man of vision. He had the imagination to look beneath the unpromising surface of events and to realize that blessings, blessing is not always found in the most obvious places. The verb to see recurs constantly in the Abraham story. He was a man who would learn to look with the inner eye of the soul. John Paul Chartre wants to find the imagination as the ability to think of something that is not present. If so, the imagination must be the chief religious faculty, since it enables us to conceive the apparently absent God. We know from our own lives that the harder, less promising option often calls for greater creativity and gives more ultimate satisfaction in the quest for blessing. Human powers need to be engaged to the hilt if we are to achieve enhanced life. So that quote I shared with you, what does it have to do with our walk in the wilderness? Well, 
Armstrong continues to address. This is what she writes. Lot was trying to find a land of blessing, like Eden, the garden of God. But he had not learned an important historical lesson. He chose to move eastward, but ever since Adam and Eve were banished from Eden, the easterly direction had come to symbolize distance and exile from the divine presence. And without the sacred, there can be no blessing. Now, here is the pinnacle of a brief description of what God is doing with people like Lot. And I put the quote on the screen here. Oops. Let me get to out of that. Get to. But Genesis indicates that it is the function of faith to make us more productive and more at ease with the world. God should not be experienced as a holy, ethereal panacea, but as a mysterious accompanying presence that helps us to make sense of the bewildering circumstances of our life on earth. Surely the Lord, your God, has blessed you in all your undertakings. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked. Faith is found in the very irony of this statement. Everything we do is a faith statement. Every time we go through a green light, we have faith that the car at that intersection is going to stop. Every time that we put money in the bank, we have faith that it will be there when we withdraw it. Every time that we go to a restaurant, we have faith that that food establishment has done everything possible to have a clean environment for us. We live with faith statements all the time. Uh, when the gospel writer was pinning the work that we now know as Matthew, he had several versions of Isaiah before. We know this because he, he quotes from, and he shares from different versions of Isaiah. And so when Matthew was writing about the birth of Jesus, could have gone with that one version of Isaiah that calls the mother a little girl. He chose another, says a virgin. You see, he had faith that the story he heard about the birth of Jesus, the story that he needed to share, the story that was so important to preach each and every Christmas morning was about a Jesus that was not only born miraculous but was Emmanuel, God. This is the ultimate faith statement for Christians. Just like the bread and the cup that we are about to share. Now, I cannot prove that the substance of wheat and juice that I have over my bread is in fact Jesus. But we have faith. We have faith at this meal, this time of worship, um, our singing and our praying will reach God. We have faith that God will be with us during our wilderness and get us to the promised land. Now, we may not like our time of waiting. We may want to argue that our time has been long enough, and we may look at this moment as a bit ironical. But we still worship, we still believe, we still pray. God is with us. And to me, that supersedes any irony of our situation right now. Amen. Um, right now, we're going to have uh, special music. And, and this is a little bit different from those uh, that I sent out in the worksheet. Um, we're going to have, it, it is called Blessings, and um, it was recorded by Lindsay on the Clavinova. And so uh, just give me a second here to share. We will exit out of that and uh, just make sure.
All right, I want to thank Lindsay for uh, providing us with the special music. And um, we're going to have our prayer of Thanksgiving now. Uh, just to remind all of you uh, that we do have uh, three ways to, to provide uh, your offering to the church. Uh, through our website, which is hearingumc.org. We have a link on there that uh, says Give Now. Um, and it's also uh, uh, on through the phone. If you go through the website on your phone, we also have a button on there that gets you straight to the Give Now. Um, it is a secure site um, uh, that's available for you. And also continue to mail in your checks uh, to 900 O Street. And uh, if you are have the opportunity to be in worship with us at nine o'clock. We have a locked box that has been provided to us um, by Lindsay and Brian Ferguson uh, that uh, you can provide in that. Well, let us now have our prayer of Thanksgiving. Uh, dear Lord, um, uh, there's a lot that we give you thanks. Um, even in the midst of so difficult of time, uh, when things seem uncertain, um, when we look at statements of blessings and we wonder how can we get in on those blessings, somehow, gracious God, we're, we get a sense that you have been with us. It's uh, a statement of faith. We can't prove it. Somehow we believe it. Um, we, we can argue against all that you do in, in the world, but gracious God, we still worship. We still pray. We still just ask that you be with us. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you so much for watching over us, being with us in, in these blessings that we do get in on. And your name be with us now as we share in this moment of communion. In your name we pray. All right. And uh, just to remind all of you that we are going to have communion now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share the screen, uh, the PowerPoint, so that we uh, have the words before us um, on that one. Slide show. There we go. I want it started me at the beginning. Sorry about that. I'm getting closer. Okay. So, um, uh, as we have done in the past, um, I will read the, the voice of one, which is in blue, and then I invite you to read the part that is in red. So, let us begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast, you delivered us from captivity, made covenant to the, our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing spring. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their undying hand. We read together. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. The Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come. You would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water. And at his ascension, you exalted him, sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, 
drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Let me repeat that. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his head in the bank. To your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God. Now and forever. I have to tell you that as I read that ritual this morning at our nine o'clock service, and then just now, it is so full of faith statements. It, it's kind of like as I shared about uh, the book about when bad things happen to good, or excuse me, when uh, when bad things happen to good people, how you read something so differently now in the pandemic. There is so much faith there. And so when we have this bread and I break it, as I said, I cannot prove that uh, the grains and, and uh, the juice that's in here is Jesus. I mean, there's no proof. I have faith. I have faith. This is going to sustain me for a week, a day, a month, a year, uh, 10 days, however long this darn thing is supposed to grow 600%. I do. We have faith, in it, and that's why we continue to worship. So I ask you now with your bread uh, or your substance to have with you, um, body of Christ broken. blood of Christ dead for you. May you be blessed this week. Um, and uh, so let me, uh, as I shared here real quickly, um, here we go. Uh, I, I think it's grown a little bit. It's not to the 600%. 10 days is a long time to wait. It was 40 years. Maybe when this is at 600%, the pandemic will be over. Maybe. Let us have our benediction. Dear Lord, I just ask that uh, you be with each and every one here on the Zoom call. Gracious God, um, thank you so much for allowing this technology to be before us. Uh, thank you to uh, Becky and to the Larsons and to Lauren. Uh, that participate in the service. Thank you to you watching over. Allow your spirit to, to be with us, your son Christ to just guide us and for your Holy Spirit to, to move us forward. And with faith, faith to, to get through this trying time. In your name we pray. Uh, thank you so much for joining us with worship. And uh, until we meet again, have a blessed week.